Hey everyone, welcome to Pega Hub. I'm Srikant, working as a lead Pega developer based out of Sydney, Australia. And you are in the right place if you want to learn Pega concepts. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you are the first to know if I upload anything new. And if you like the video, hit the like button and share it with your friends. So today we are going to discuss a very interesting topic about over 2.0. When I was just uh, doing my study back back in when I was learning this, I actually saw a lot of materials uh, in internet and then I found it is like really confusing. It depends on the person who is trying to bring this topic to you. They, they have their own jargons and all. What I did is I'm trying to simplify as much as I can so that everybody can understand. The whole idea for me to make you guys understand how the architecture work, okay? rather than using all the jargon so i'm gonna go uh, uh slowly and i'll try to make sure that you guys understand and you'll never be confused about OAuth anymore now let's understand what is OAuth 2.0 right the first thing that we need to understand is OAuth means open authorization now when i say open authorization as the name itself indicate it's an authorization protocol not an authentication protocol it is basically designed primarily to grant access which will allow a website of application to access resources hosted by the other web apps. So what does that mean? Let's say you got two applications, application A and application B, and you're trying to log into application A. Application A will allow you to go to log into application B so that they can get their information from there, which is a very uh, common um, uh, functionality now you would find in many apps where they will allow you to log in via Facebook, log in via uh, Google, right? So that's what OAuth is designed for. Now the last thing is, it is mainly used for delegation authorization. Like I told, when you are basically delegating the authorization to another application, that's where you use this. Now let's understand a use case so that you know you can very well connect what I'm going to uh, tell in this session. When you're trying to let's say register uh, in Spotify by using your Google account. Now, if people do not know that Spotify is one of the, uh, uh, you know, music uh, software company where they created the app and it's one of the best app that you can find on the market. Now, let's say you are trying to register yourself to Spotify and Spotify has an option that you can connect via Google, connect via uh, uh, Facebook. So this is the screen which I was talking about. So this is the login page of Spotify. And if you see, there are three options like connect with Google, connect with Facebook, connect with Apple, or you can sign in. Now, let's say you are trying to connect with Google in our use case, right? Now, what will happen is the moment you connect with Google, you will see a sign in page from Google will pop up on the screen. Now, here, if you see, it's clearly tell to continue to Spotify, right? That's where you are trying to log in, right? Now, after you find this sign in option, you will uh, try to log in. And after you successfully logged in, as you could see that it tried to fetch your first name. Let's say, for example, it fetched my first name and last name and it could able to fetch and put on the screen of Spotify, wherein I haven't actually given anything because I just logged into Google. So this is how the uh, OAuth works. Now, the next step which we need to focus is, instead of explaining how OAuth works and all this thing, let me first try to make you familiarize about the jargons or the terminology that we use uh, for OAuth and we also use that in the process of my demo. Now, the first thing is resource owner. Now, what is a resource owner? So simply, if you're asking me, resource owner is nothing but you and me. So resource means your, your detail, right? First name, last name, middle name, whatever. Those are the resources. Now, who is the owner of that? You are the owner because you are trying to log into Spotify. So resource owner means it is you and me. Now, client. Now, in our example, client is nothing but Spotify. So basically the application which wants to access your data. Now, who is uh, the application who wants to access your data? It's Spotify, right? Now, second is authorization server. Now, authorization server is someone who authorizes the detail where the resource owners user ID and passwords are stored. In our example, Google uh, basically stores your user ID and password and Spotify trying to connect to Google, right? So basically when you sign in, where exactly you sign in? You sign in the Google sign in page, right? So it's Google's authorization server. Now the next up, ne next thing is resource server. So basically resource server means the server which contain the resources. Now in this example, as you could see my previous use case where you saw my name been populated in Spotify, basically Spotify got the name from Google. 
that means in the uh, in this scenario the resource server is going to be google's resource server now why there are two things authorization server and google's uh, sorry resource server so at times what happened is the big organization what they do is they try to keep all the credentials uh, password into a different server and also uh, they're trying to keep all the resources to a different server a good practice that you def you separate the data in a proper way right now uh, most organization will have two different servers one for authorization one for resource but having said that it doesn't uh, mean that they are doing something wrong if both the authorization and resource lying in the same server okay i just wanted to call out the difference uh, uh, terminology that we use so we'll be using the same thing authorization server and resource server now the next thing which i want to highlight is authorization grant now authorization grant is nothing but the moment you go and sign in you are basically giving a grant right to uh, spotify to access the data from google so that is called authorization grant now redirect URI. this is another um, you know very important thing in the uh, uh, whole aspect so when uh, you go to uh, spotify you're trying to log in uh, to google what happened is after you successfully log in, Google has to come back to Spotify, right? With all the details that Spotify needs so that they can capture. Now that is called redirect URI, wherein when the moment you log in, in the URI of the sign-in page, you would find that Spotify will give a redirect URI to Google so that Google will go uh, and uh, after successfully log in, it will call to that URI and give the details back to Spotify. Now scope, scope is another concept of granularity wherein Google's authorization server will define uh, the multiple scope. For example, your uh, whether uh, Spotify want to access only to your name or your email ID or your um, uh, name and email ID. Uh, so scope is kind of very granular wherein it kind of limits the data that Google is sharing with Spotify because Google cannot share all the data of yours to Spotify, right? For example, if Spotify needs only the first name and last name, why would Spotify needs all your location history with Google stores? It doesn't make sense, right? That's why Google will um, uh, define the scope in the authorization server and uh, the client here, Spotify, will make sure that they are passing those scopes while they are uh, allowing you to sign in. Access token, that's the final step wherein once all uh, the login successful, authentication successful, grant happened, everything, Sport, uh, Google will uh, send, a access, send an access token back to Spotify so that Spotify will use that access token and uh, you know fetch your resource. I hope this terminology is clear. These are very important to understand the flow. Now let's try and understand the actual flow. Now let's say you got a Spotify screen and then uh, obviously the moment you continue with Google, what will happen is Google uh, will open with a sign-in page. That's why if you see the uh, sign-in page I have kept in the authorization server part and resource server is the resource. So uh, here, the first step, what will happen is the moment you continue uh, with Google, the moment you click on the continue with Google, it will open the sign in page. And if you notice the URI will have a lot of parameter along with the sign in page of uh, Google, uh, the URL will have the sign in page of Google along with a lot of query parameter. In those query parameter, these are the common things which you will find out. First thing is target server, where in, in our case is going to be authorization server client underscore id is nothing but the client id now here who is the client spotify is a client of google right now what will happen is uh, google would have already registered spotify behind the scene and google would have generate a client id for spotify so google understand that spotify is a trusted client that i can share the information you uh, you cannot just you know go and ask google they wouldn't obviously share the information so this client id is nothing but spotify has already been registered in google so they know Redirect URI, as I already explained, I made this up, the spotify.com slash redirect, just to give you kind of a feel, but the actual redirect URI might be different. So what will happen is in the first request, when you uh, populate the sign in page uh, in the URL, you will find that Spotify would have mentioned the redirect URI for Google to call back. A scope, also the same functionality which I told that uh, Spotify has to mention what scope that it is looking for. And based on that, Google will allow or not is what Google is going to decide. Now let's say uh, you have uh, got the sign in page and you successfully signed in uh, to Google. Now what next will happen is Google will call back to the redirect URI, which is Spotify in our case, and Google will send an authorization code. This authorization code is kind of giving Spotify a hint saying that, hey, the uh, you know resource owner is authorized and now you are good to go. 
So what Spotify will do in that scenario is it will call Google again with a different uh, URL altogether, wherein it will pass that authorization code. But there is another critical information that uh, Spotify will pass is called client ID and client secret. Now, what is a client ID and client secret? Like I told, as Spotify would have already registered to Google, or that means Google would have created a client ID and client secret is a password of the Spotify to, to go and access the information from Google. So this is a password for Spotify to, uh, you know, uh, get the access, right? So that means it will be passed in the next request. But if you see, I have made it a dotted line just to highlight the fact that obviously they cannot pass the client ID and secret in the URL, right? Because everybody can read that. You cannot pass that in query parameter. So it will be a post call to Google, wherein it will be wrapped inside the body, the authorization code, client ID and client secret, and Google will find out, validate, everything is good. Then what will happen is Google will respond back with an access token. Now, this is the final step wherein Spotify has got the access token miss. Spotify reached to the final for uh, uh, them to fetch the information from Google server by using that access token. So if you see the uh, last thing, wherein the access token uh, is going to uh, be confidential data. So, uh, and it's obviously has to be securely sent to Google to fetch the information. And that's how Spotify will go and fetch the data uh, from Google. So this is the OAuth flow, and this is how exactly it works uh, on a very high level. All right, now let's try and see uh, some real-time uh, example wherein I have taken a chart GPT. Whatever we have discussed, we are going to see. Now you click on the login page of chart GPT. As you could see, that login page has got all the options like continue with Google, continue with other accounts, right? Now let's say I'm going to click on the Google link as I explained. As you could see that in the URI I have highlighted, I have also got the Gmail uh, um, detail. Now in the URI, if I copy paste this URI, whatever uh, chart GPT is sending to Google, then you would find all the details. But it's not readable. So what I did is I have actually got one link wherein you, it will pass the URL and it will show you exactly what has been passed with, after parsing. So here what I'm going to do is I'll paste it and I'll copy this URL and paste it over here to parse it. Now, once it's parsed, you would see the query string, which are the key things which uh, charge GPT sent to Google. And that's what I have discussed is first thing is response type is code. And the second thing is the redirect URL. It's the callback URL for uh, uh, defined by charge GPT so that Google can call back. And then obviously there are other parameter. The third parameter that which we uh, discussed uh, in, after the callback URL is about the scope. Now here, what ChatGPT is asking is the scope as email profile and the fourth one is the client ID. Now the client ID, which ChatGPT would have got uh, registered. And as you could see, there are other uh, parameter, but these are the main parameter, which I would like you to have a look. All right, the next step that we are going to do is, let's go back to the uh, login page and try to do an inspect element. When you do inspect element, basically it's going to open all the logs and networks uh, in your browser. So basically the network area is going to provide all the calls that is going to happen behind the scene when you are going to now click on the Gmail ID and it will also, uh, you know, put all the steps. Now, after I click on my Gmail ID, wherein I'm actually basically logging in, you would see that my names has been already pulled by OpenAI uh, from Google account. Now let's analyze them. So here, if you notice, there are sequence of event happen in the uh, uh, tab. Now, uh, if you see, if I highlight the callback tab, wherein uh, uh, OpenAI got the authorization code after you successfully logged in, and OpenAI has got the respective code, and it is 200, a get call. And after it uh, got the authorization code, this is where it actually tried to do a post call and try to get the token by passing the client ID and other detail along with the authorization code. In the response, you are getting the um, author access token with a uh, obviously token type as a barrier means that means it's secure. So this is how OpenAI will get the detail um, of your by using the access token. Now the subsequent call, what uh, OpenAI does is it call and try to fetch your resource information that's needed. Now let's talk about the grant type, which is our final part of the presentation. 
and how you're gonna use them. There are four main grant type that we will see that in day to day life. And to start with, one is authorization code grant type. One is a uh, second one is implicit grant type. Third one is resource owner credential grant type. Fourth one is client credential grant type. Now, what is authorization code grant type? Authorization, authorization code grant type is exactly what I have just explained over here. Now, if you see here, you are getting an authorization code. You are basically, um, uh, after you get the authorization code, you are using your client ID and secret and along with the authorization code to fetch the access token. And using that access token, you are fetching the resource detail. What is the second one? Implicit grant type. Now, this kind of grant type is being used when you are you have a simplified flow where the access token is returned directly to the client in the implicit flow. So basically what happened is you will not have an additional uh, uh, step of getting the uh, authorization code and passing the client ID at secret and getting the access token. In the first instance where Google, uh, let's say you validate, Google validate you, they will send back that uh, uh, um, uh, access token back to the client. Now, the, you know, applications like React and all, they generally go with that approach wherein they do not have the facility to uh, call back uh, again with or store or have a server wherein they can call back again. So this kind of application go with this kind of grant type. Now, the third one is resource owner credential grant type. Let's say if you're trying to go to Spotify and you kind of trust Spotify to sharing your Google's credential, Google's your user ID and password, which generally we shouldn't be doing that because why would I trust my Google's account password with another uh, uh, app? But this kind of grant type will be used when if there is no uh, redirect is possible, right? You are going to give your credential and then client will take that credential along with the client ID and secret to uh, the authorization server and try to get the uh, access token. Now, this kind of uh, grant type has got its pro, uh, which obviously you are not redirecting uh, the to authorization server again and again. But the cons is like resource owner needs to provide that um, uh, kind of need to trust the client right to buy because they are providing their uh, user ID and password for Google, which obviously they don't want to share with. And the last one is client credential grant type. Spotify has got a uh, client ID and um, uh, secret, right? Because they would have registered before even, right? Now, what happened is they will share those uh, client ID and uh, secret to Google and try to fetch the, uh, the information. So this kind of uh, uh, grant type is used. For example, I, I think I got one example wherein, let's say a third party app where uh, they're trying to fetch the list of flight details for a specific day. Now, if you see here, here they are not getting any information of a resource owner. Basically, they are doing some other business wherein they are trying to get this bulk. So basically, they, are, they do not need your um, authorization, right? A resource owner's authorization, right? So this kind of scenario wherein you can go with the client uh, credential grant type. Now we have reached to the end of my video and I hope you got the concept clearly about what is OAuth and how it has been implemented. Now, my next target is to use the OAuth in Pega where I'm going to show you some practical examples of uh, OAuth in Pega and uh, Pega as a OAuth provider and Pega as a OAuth consumer. So stay for my next video. Until then, goodbye.